Senior Bowl week concluded with the Senior Bowl game, and hopefully you were able to join us for the watch along. If not, I'm going to give you my winners, my losers, my risers, and my fallers for Senior Bowl week. What's crackalackin'? It's your boy, Broshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's go ahead, start with the winners. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be kind of like talking about a lot of guys here but Malik Willis was probably by far one of the probably bigger winners of the week risers when it came to this quarterback class we could throw Matt Corral in here because honestly this quarter the quarterbacks didn't look great this week and it's just when it came to Malik Willis you just saw the pure upside with the arm talent we already knew that athletically he was extremely gifted we saw it on that run at the end of the first quarter and you saw the zip even in the rain and it was just it was just a good week for him honestly he's probably for a lot of people going to be the top quarterback in this class just because of that upside i still think there it is a bit wide open when it comes to this quarterback class but i imagine a lot of people aren't going to be keeping out malik willis in the top 20 just because of that athletic upside and that freaking rocket for an arm that zip that off platform throw like just the guy is good so he didn't rise up my boards too much and to be specific when i'm talking about risers and fallers these are guys that like took drastic increases drastic decreases on my board and I'm, I'm gonna be sure to mention a lot of guys in here even if they don't get their own little overlay but let's go ahead talk about my loser at the quarterback position by far Kenny Pickett I don't think it's even close you can make a case for uh maybe a Carson Strong had the pick in the game he didn't look nearly as accurate throughout the week he was also like the anticipation he was late or mainly late on a lot of throws it, it just wasn't great for him but Kenny Pickett by far looked like he had the weakest arm among all the quarterbacks, Bailey Zappi included. I can't see Kenny Pickett coming in the first round. Uh, the eight inch hands are already worrisome. Keep in mind, historically in the modern era, no quarterback outside of Michael Vick has started in the NFL with sub nine inch hands. And I'm just gonna say Kenny Pickett ain't no Michael Vick. You, just during the practices this week, you saw a noticeable zip, uh, lack of zip on his throws. The ball, the balls came out wobbly. Um, he had that that uh, just he was short on that throw to Christian Watson in the Senior Bowl game, and it was Watson that made the play on it, turned that into a huge gain. He didn't really make any special throws throws during the game. And he had a fumble under center during the week when it was rainy. And you're going to worry about maybe conditions when it comes to him. It's just like, for me, again, knowing that Michael Vick only sub nine inch hands to ever start in the NFL. I feel like there's a lot going against Pickett here. He doesn't nearly have, uh, I think he doesn't have a strong enough arm. I mean, when Zappy's out here throwing bombs, well, at least better than Pickett, then there's a problem i'm moving them to firmly midday two uh some people will still be on them in the first round they're gonna point to this last season of play they're gonna probably ignore the previous three seasons of just mediocre mediocre play i was gonna say mediocrity is that a word i don't know but is what it is uh when it came to the other quarterbacks here i thought sam howe looked pretty good um I thought he was the most consistent from a throw to throw basis during practices. I thought in the game outside of just, he got pressured like between Malik Willis, Bailey Zappi and Sam Howe, that national team stood no chance. The offensive line was not doing them any favors and oh, it sucked. Howe got hit from behind on what two throws caused fumbles. Like he had no time. I think granted one, I think was at the end of like the third, or it was in like one of their two minute drill uh situations so it was like a third and one so he's holding on ball a little longer looking for that guy trying to get out the pocket hit from behind i think it was i can't remember who it was specifically 
but um yeah just it wasn't wasn't great but you saw the wheels he ended up leading him to a td and i believe a field goal on multiple on his two drives desmond ritter he looked good in the senior bowl game but uh outside of that carson strong pickett had pretty down weeks when it comes to this running back class i really got no one of note i think everyone kind of performed how i expected if anything it was i didn't know much about abram smith coming into this and they really leaned on him heavily in the game he looked good throughout the week he doesn't bring a lot to the table like he he's this north south runner uh for all intents and purposes mainly a power back and he runs your standard running back tree but with i mean his, his size 511 or uh 511 211 it translates to the nfl i he's probably gonna get a late day three shot and that's better than i did have him ranked to begin with uh damian pierce looked good uh jerome ford he congratulations i think he had a daughter i believe but he had a he had a baby that's why he didn't participate in the senior bowl game but he looked good this week uh tyler Beatty looked good like uh also props to tj pledger the utah running back coming in uh for the last day of practice in the senior bowl as a reserve and he played pretty well in the game but let's go to the receivers not a lot of receivers separated themselves uh it just outside of jalen tolbert who just looked like the best receiver here i'd have to go with christian watson man a guy that i didn't know a lot about coming in outside of his size and i was like okay apparently he's got like two four speed two four four or two four four 4440 speed, 445 speed. And you saw that in a draft that's not filled with a ton of guys that are like 6'3 plus. Like he's 6'4, 211. It's got some mean straight line speed. He showed good hands throughout the week. You saw you saw a little shimmy, a little jitter at the uh break on the breaks or routes. Like I came in very impressed. And like honestly, let's go take a look at like these wide receivers real quick uh that are probably if we're looking guys that aren't really considered in the first round conversation i'd throw pickens in the first round conversation like we look at uh jalen tolbert it was supposed to be six three came in way or only uh six foot but like you got david bell who's six two alec pierce who was here this weekend didn't really stand out much in my opinion six three justin ross six four you got the injury concerns uh you got eric uh oh izu kanma uh from texas tech but he he's a guy that's more after the catch like there's not a lot of tall receivers in this class and if team's looking for a tall receiver especially some sometime on day two i think they're gonna come calling his name he made a lot of money i think for himself but uh Outside of that, like the uh, like I said, the receivers didn't do much. Like Bo Melton showed some after the catch ability, but he was mainly just throwing screens. He had a bad punt return. <laughs> Let's just call it that. Uh, I mean, Calvin Austin. He looks he looks like a gadget receiver guy that's gonna be in the slot. It's in there at 5'7", 173. So he's a bit gimmicky, like. Uh, Ontario Drummond had his moments here and there. Danny Gray came in weighing like weighing way like just measuring up way smaller than anticipated. Uh Khalil Shakir, Jalen Tolbert, and Christian Watson for me were the clear winners this week when it came to the receiver position. Romeo Dubs doesn't look like he wants to be physical for a guy that's six one two oh four. Uh and he looks like a bot like he's a body catcher. He had a lot of like he just you just didn't see the ball skills throughout practice this week uh, i think that was kind of a big hit to dubs i was hoping trey turner would come out and separate himself he didn't really do that uh the tight ends not real and i'm gonna skip the tight ends here everyone performed to basically how i expected uh so i didn't really have any risers or real fallers when it came to this tight end class uh i mean we could say connor hayward may be a big riser for me but he's more of an h back fullback than an actual tight end so let's go to the offensive line max mitchell man was a big loser for me on the week he had a like he was kind of up and down all week you saw him struggle against power and occasionally like get bent on the edge like i get like i get it. he comes in he's still recovering he had multiple hand fractures in his hands um 
or at least one of his hands during the season and during the end of the season so i don't know how recovered he is from that but he kind of was so so during the week had a bad senior bowl performance he was one of the worst probably offensive tackles there in pass protection uh it i think it just hurt his grade dude a guy that was pretty high on coming into this uh uh, coming into the senior bowl and he's probably going to be a day three guy when it's all said and done sub 300 too. So it's like, uh, not all that great. Uh, let's talk about a riser here. Dylan Parham. He actually played exceptionally well in the game. He came in weighing so much more than I thought he did. Like he's listed at 285 for Memphis and he came in 313. He looked pretty good during practices throughout the week, though Zion Nel or Zion Johnson was kind of the talk of the town. Uh, I, f I, s I feel real nasally right now. Ooh, excuse me. But I kind of deemed that he was like, he's an undersized interior player that just will get bullied, you know? And you know what? He put on weight. He looked great this week. I think he's firmly in the midday two conversation after I kind of like had him in a, as a fifth rounder. This is what the senior ball does. He was probably, and I'm not going to list Zion Johnson here because I had Zion Johnson in my top 50. And if anything, he just probably moved up like 15 spots more to like that 30, 25 to like 35 area for me. So like he wasn't like a big riser, but Parham, was for me like he looked exceptionally good uh, along with jamari sawyer a guy that i've been saying can't stay a tackle he's not gonna stay a tackle he has to kick inside a guard he was basically playing guard at georgia because he was playing either with a tight end or two tight ends always next to him and he, he played guard throughout the week and he actually he was one of the highest winners when it came to uh uh like per reps like on the one-on-ones he i don't only think he lost like maybe one rep throughout the whole week looked good in the game so yeah firm i feel firmly that this guy will probably be like early third round after kind of like making him a fourth fifth rounder uh because i wasn't exactly in love with him said he has to make the move move to guard and he did this week and looked pretty darn good but kind of wrapping up the rest of the offensive line group like i really thought abraham lucas came in i don't think he lost a rep at all this week the game there was a couple of reps he he lost but like i think he's firmly a day two guy he's a guy that's pro ready come in uh might not have the highest of ceilings but can definitely play right off the bat uh cole strange was kind of up and down i didn't see like didn't watch much of him going into this and I know that I th I know that they got him playing center, and he didn't play center a lot at Chattanooga, as far as I believe. But uh, he he looked as you would expect a guy from Chattanooga. I kind of had this like fifth, sixth round grade on him. That's probably gonna be about the same. Uh, Smith looked good, the uh, Virginia Tech guard. Again, another guy that I don't think really helped his grade. Just kind of cemented what I thought about him. Uh, same with Mark, uh, Marquise Hayes, um, Bernard, uh, Bernhard Raymond, Ryman, excuse me. Uh, he, he was up and down, but I thought he won more than he lost this week. And it was like, I kind of confirmed where I was like, yeah, this is a guy you're not going to want to start right away, at least at tackle, but he has the tools. You could say the same thing about Trevor Pennant, but Trevor Pennant looks way more raw than, Ryman and he lost way more you you know penalties are going to be an issue that I, I I sent that on Twitter dude he's going to draw as many penalties as he commits like yeah, I think he was one of the lead in um uh guys and uh, like offensive linemen and penalties for the FCS but uh Braxton Jones you saw ups and downs with him you love the 36 arms but he's probably going to be like a developmental tackle prospect taking in like 5th or 6th round uh Cade Mays yeah he came in and was like yeah he has to play guard i mean you look at those 34 inch arms you want him to play on the outside but it's like nah the guy's going to play guard but he still looked like pretty up and down uh Daniel Falele got put on his butt and i mean i came into thinking like came into this like 
yeah, Fale, uh, Daniel Falele like, is not a guy that you want to start from the get-go, and he looked exactly like that. So again, another guy with pure upside. Darren Kennard, after he kicked inside to guard after uh, day one, like he didn't win a lot. Like he looks like a guy that's like getting used to playing guard and he just doesn't have the athleticism i think or really the hand placement or uh, hand technique uh hand usage in pass protection and stick to the outside it looks like he's gonna be learning guard and i i was never that high on him not even as a top 50 prospect so i thought about the same so uh yeah if anything uh what is it jatir carter out of southern i thought got a lot of money this week like came in playing center on the fly he used to play tackle at southern and he's playing a lot more interior this week and i thought for a guy coming from southern looked really good he's probably a mid to late day three guy but i thought it looked quality so let's go ahead let's talk about the defense uh perry on winfrey easy winner probably the biggest winner this week i had him as a third rounder because I was like, I don't know why Oklahoma, they just don't put him on the field as a run defender. You know, he's sub 300. So maybe he just, he, maybe he's just this pass rushing specialist. Came in, weighing at 303. He looked good in run drills. And you know what? He looked, dis he was disruptive. He, he was everything you wanted and more from a guy in terms of his like, dis like ability to disrupt the pocket to disrupt the quarterback he is an amazing pass rusher but i think this cat could probably stick on the field during the run game like he did it all week and looked solid so i got him in the top 50 i'm not gonna list like a Devonte wyatt here because he him and travis jones while they looked great this week i'm probably only moving them up a few spots because they were exactly who i thought they were you know so i don't want to like give i want to show love to some of the guys i weren't maybe not nearly as high on or maybe too high on going into this process. But I thought Eric Johnson did a fantastic week. He put it, he put his name on the map during the NFL PA Bowl. And then I saw that he got a senior bowl invite that right after the NFL PA Bowl, he was flying to Mobile. Like I think he, he found out 11 p.m. that night, flew there the next day, and he looked like he belonged. That was the most important. I'll never forget. It was a failed pass rush attempt, but he went for a fake spin move. Y'all remember uh, Micah Parsons? Well, imagine this one, but not as crisp. And you know what? I like it because the guy is a bit twitchy. Like, he impressed me so much. He, I think he made a ton of money. And this is actually probably one of my favorite prospects. Uh, just because, like, again, f not hearing him until the NFL PA Bowl Finding out he's going to Mobile. I was real excited about him after the NFL PA Bowl. And to see him come in and compete and do well really warmed my heart. Logan Hall looks good, but he's not a guy I'm going to move up too much. Because, like, again, I came in thinking, oh, he's a similar prospect to Peyton Turner. He is. <laughs> uh, but uh, I guess, I mean, some of the big boys like Farrell from LSU, Ridgeway from Arkansas, uh, Agbania from UCLA. They were they, they were kind of what I thought they were mid day three guys, uh, mid day three run stuffers with a little pass rushing uh, upside. Uh, all that all capable of playing the nose tech position. So yeah, no, I I, I thought it was a, the defensive line class. Like the defensive line talent was just overwhelming, especially to this offensive line, like. There was hardly a guy that didn't look good on the defensive line against the offensive line this week. Jermaine Johnson, let's talk about him. By far the biggest, probably the biggest winner for a lot of people. I had a kind of second round grade in him because it's a deep edge class. Uh, and I thought he wasn't going to be the longest defender. I thought he wasn't going to be the most explosive guy. And because he came in 34 inch arms. And I was like, gosh, that's so much longer than they look. Because to be fair, he's kind of jacked. I mean, his arms are so, like, like pumped up. I didn't expect him to be that long. And uh, I think still from an explosive standpoint, he's he he's not near the top of this class, but he it looks like he, he could start on an NFL field tomorrow. It really does. He looks plug and play. He might – I think he could 
produce a couple of elite seasons, but for the most part, he's going to be a very solid NFL player. It might not have the upside like of a David Ajabo in this class, but I think you see him come off the board top 20. Definitely made a lot of money this week. Also, uh, Boy Mafe, especially during the game, he didn't lose at all. He was winning everything. Like his athleticism's off the charts, and I kind of knew that. And I thought he became more of a polished pass rusher this year in Minnesota. But still, it felt like he needed some season. But he was nigh unstoppable here at the Senior Bowl. I think with his type of tools, I know it's an edge deep class. There's a lot of talent. I think he's firmly in the top 50 discussion. It wouldn't surprise me if a team maybe jumped on him at the end of the first round. Like, that's how good this edge class is. It really really is it's very talented Uh, if we're going to talk about a loser at the edge position if anybody it's cameron thomas like not being able to compete first of all he uh he tweaked something during warm-ups on day one and wasn't able to compete this week and then he came in sub 270 he was weighing about 270 280 uh at least listed at san diego state this year so he's seen as this tweener he can't, you coming in 264, you're not going to be playing on the inside. You're not that tweener. You're firmly an outside uh, edge defender at that point. So it was a bit of disappointment, especially for, it, for a week that a lot of guys made a lot of money. I really felt Cameron Thomas like missed out. Uh, and teams, they're going to look at that size and be like, Yo, we can't, this guy's not a tweener. This is a guy that we can't kick inside. Uh, so I I think he might fall to the third round because of it. Uh, we'll see when it comes around the combine. Hopefully he gets a second chance and performs exceptionally well. Talk a little bit about, like, we got to talk about the edge class, right? We got to talk about it. Because Arnold Ebiketti looked good this week. Uh, even Amari Barno, I thought he's undersized, but you know this guy's going to be a good pass rushing specialist. Uh, in the league d'angelo malone just looked like a better version of barno uh though though he does need to work on coverage skills they they did try to kind of play him uh, in coverage a little bit during the game and he got toasted a few times uh dominique robinson showed the ability to kick inside on like uh sitting there at 254 and was disruptive like oh man that's gonna be that's gonna be dope on third downs man Isaiah Thomas kind of did the same thing this week. Uh, Jesse Laquetta was a huge winner. Like, even in the game, he was so good. Kinsley and Agbari was kind of a bit neutral for me. Uh, didn't really, like, wasn't showing the violent hands initially. Just, he was relying heavily on the bull rush on one-on-ones uh, on day two. And then, I think things kind of came together. He looked a lot more violent on day three. Uh, Myja Sanders was disruptive during the, during the game. He was great during run drills. Like, yeah, no, I thought I thought this defensive line couldn't really do any wrong. Uh, and I kind of felt that way about the linebackers as well. Uh, Brian Osimo was probably my biggest winner of the week just because of that 30. Like, this dude's got 33 and 3 eighth arms. A wingspan of 80 inches. That's nuts. That's wild. At six foot two twenty two, he's a very physical player, but like he's gonna be a monster in coverage. I think he's like this linebacker class keeps looking better and better. Like Chad Muma, he looked fine this week. Um, he struggled here and there during like uh, like on the pass rushing drills or uh, pass blocking, however you want to call it, like against running backs and whatnot. Um, and it's just the dude's a great athlete. He's going to be like that extra blitzer. He's a sure tackler, and he's good in coverage. Like, I don't think Muma hurt himself at all this week. Uh, even Aaron Hainsford, I thought, was solid. He's a good late, like mid to late day three option at the linebacker position. Shannon Tindall had a hell of a week. Go back, look at that, like that, um, the drill with uh, Brian Robinson in the linebacker versus run back in pass protection. That was a hell of a battle. Everyone remembers the hit that Brian Robinson laid on Tyndall, but they don't remember that Tyndall won the two out of three. Like, and he had a good game. Damian Clark looked solid. Darian Beavers, like, 
Troy Anderson had a hell of a week, dude. He's probably he could probably sneak into day day two. Like this was a good week for the deep well for the front seven. Uh aside from my loser here, um, or the, my faller, uh Sterling Weatherford. He is a safety converted into linebacker, but you wouldn't be able to tell that. He was a missed tackle machine, and he looked like he was struggling to keep up with running backs. As a safety, like converted into linebacker, you should be able to, you you would think you would have better coverage skills. A lot of people kind of deemed this guy as kind of like Kyle Hamilton Light from Miami, Ohio. Because uh, I think he was around the 221, 224 range. But he just didn't look it in coverage, man. He didn't look the part. I felt like he kind of like got like was lost in the shuffle among these uh these uh linebackers even uh the georgia tech uh linebacker well safety converted the linebacker looked better than him so uh yeah i dropped him from fifth to late day three and honestly it wouldn't surprise me if he went undrafted i think he's gonna really need to test out well and then my, let's talk a couple of fallers at corner and Roger McCreary. Did he have a bad week? No. He probably looked like the best corner out here. You might be like, why is he a faller? It all comes down to the 29-inch arms. Listen, I think there was only like three or four corners last year that started on the outside with sub-30-inch arms. It was Dante Jackson and Cameron Sutton. Both, that guy, both those guys are arguably probably better slot options. I think Roger McCreary, he, he's, I got him top 50. He's probably going to be in that 30 to 40 range for me. I still love him as a prospect, but I think a, the, that arm length is going to firmly take him out of the, the first round. You just don't see slot corners go in the first round. And he was actually practicing during 7-on-7s seven seven and 11-on-11s. Eleven he was practicing at slot corner. So, like, I really think the NFL will probably see him as a slot corner. So, uh, I still think he could probably sneak into the first. Like, he's got the talent. He's a very fluid athlete, but some teams are going to look at that length and be like, that ain't it, brah. So, I think he probably knocked himself out of the first round discussion. So, that's why I list him here as a loser, even though he was probably, I would say, the best looking corner here. And Mobile. And then Darion Kendrick. My gosh, this guy can't handle a fast receiver. He can't handle a shifty, elusive receiver. Like, listen, one-on-ones, they're designed for the corners to essentially lose. You're, you're put on an island where you would typically have safety help. Like, it's designed to make the receivers look good. But, like... He was losing, and the separation was a lot. Like, he was looking good during the red zone drills, but, man, I'm just, I re I'm really worried about this, this cat's speed. So, we'll see how he tests out at the combine. He also has the character concerns that you're going to have to answer for. I think he's firmly in the day three discussion at this point. I think he until we kind of figure out more stuff with the whole what happened at Clemson and then looking at what his, at least his straight line speed his uh how he does in like the uh the shuttle and the cone the agility drills it just it wasn't a good week anytime he was on like a Trey Turner a uh Calvin Austin uh shoot man I even think um like just Really, a lot, a lot of the shifty, shiftier guys, like he just he struggled with it. It was rough. It was rough. But let's talk about a big winner. Uh, Tariq Castro Fields was kind of the talk. Like there were a lot of articles talking about how good he played, and uh, they really like his recovery speed. And I know this guy's got great straight line speed. I was kind of worried about he's a bit handsy. Will he be a guy that's highly penalized in the NFL? Had a late or a midday three grade on him. And he performed exceptionally well. Like I said, his recovery speed, pretty darn good. 
I mean, on this uh, rep you see right here, or not even rep, but on this picture right here, he was actually, he caught up behind Alec Pierce after Alec Pierce kind of like bodied him at the line of scrimmage and was able to make the interception. Granted, the ball was a bit underthrown, but still, like being able to recover, because that's sometimes what it is with like the corner position. You're going to lose at some point, but it's it's how you recover from that. It looks like he's got he's got that that explosiveness that quickness to really make up ground if he loses at the line of scrimmage though i think that he has a good chance to be one of the better press options in this class on day two so good on him uh, i read nothing but good things about castro fields too uh, i think alante taylor was also a winner this week he looked he up there he was up there with uh, roger mccreer as one of the more fluent athletes he had the interception in the game granted it was a it was either an under throw or a very poor poorly placed pass by carson uh strong but yeah no he looked good uh cameron taylor Britt looked like a looked like a strong safety looked like a box guy with the hits he was laying out here uh kobe bryant was fine he did allow a touchdown in the game which i was a little sad about but, I mean, there wasn't really much here to talk about when it came to the corners. But the safeties, Jalen Pitry, dude, firmly top 50. I fall in love with slot guys. I really, really do. You could go back to last year. I was losing my mind that Elijah Molden didn't make it inside the top 100 of the draft. I was like, I had this guy in my, like, what, somewhere in my 30s or 40s. And I just couldn't believe he was still on the board. I think Pitry made a ton of money this week. I already had him as one of my top slot, like slot only options, but I think he could play the safety. He was playing the safety position just fine uh, during the game. And yeah, I think he's going to be a top 50 dude. He made a ton of money. And we could also talk about, uh, I think Leon, I actually guy that probably I was more impressed with. Then some other people were, it was Leon O'Neal Jr. out of Texas A&M. I wasn't particularly impressed with his tape. Uh, he looked like your standard box safety, big hitter, doesn't really go for the wrap-up. He goes for the, the hit stick, the highlight reel. Those are kind of a dime a dozen in the uh, in the NFL. You know, so I, I gave him undrafted free agent grade. But watching him during the game, dude, he was very active in run defense, and I like that. If you're going to be a box only, you got to be active against the run game. Again, that he has that mentality of a big hitter. He did have two missed tackles, uh, but I thought he played well. I like the aggression. If he could become a more sure tackler, I like him in that midday three mix. If I'm looking for a box safety, he's on the board. I wouldn't mind taking him. This guy is, he's strong, dude. And that's the thing. He can match up again. Like, he he can stack a tight end trying to block him. I like that. I like that a lot about him. And then, just to round out some of the other uh, safeties. Like, we know Kirby. Kirby Joseph. The length was immense. He looked good in the game. Uh, he's kind of the Jamar Johnson. If you remember Jamar Johnson from Indiana last year. Where... Kirby Joseph, he's kind of got a bit of a small sample size. I think he's actually a lot better uh, in terms of his measurements than Jamar Johnson. So I think Kirby Joseph, I kind of already had like a third round grade on him. And I think that's probably about right. That's about the area he ends up in. Um, JT Woods, guy out of Baylor. I know he had the pick. It was kind of a gimme pick. He wasn't that impressive this week. I hadn't, I hadn't watched really any of him and probably don't plan to i'm just gonna put that out there Tariq woolen looked like a good press guy um but it doesn't look like he's really a fluid athlete or at least his hips uh so again the guy at that size though it's kind of ridiculous with his length like you're not gonna want him to play off coverage anyway but he was pretty impressive this week but let me know who are some of your guys in the comment section below we're gonna have a mock draft later today so check that out but until next time you be easy my friends later